In this video, we're going to be talking about anti-roll bars, low wind springs, coilovers and spacers. We've got IBAC here with us today to give us the details. So we've got Ben here with us today to go through some of the IBAC products. Ben, what can you tell us about IBAC as a company to start with? So IBAC was established in 1951, so we've been going for more than 70 years now. We're a manufacturer of quality suspension componentry for aftermarket, which we're going to talk about today. But there's various other aspects that we can talk about as we go through it. So uh, original equipment, uh, armoured vehicles, uh, suspension for ambulances and dog vans, that kind of thing. Um, as well as this side of the business, we do manufacture springs for things like uh, earthquake control for buildings, that kind of thing. Anything with a spring in it, basically, IBAC has worked on. That's a pretty broad range, to be fair. So when it comes to one of the, the major things that we look at is uh, lowering springs. One of the first things that you do is um, get a car, you want to lower it a little bit. You do a couple of different variations, don't you? You do a, a, yep. pro, a pro kit and a sport line. For those people that don't know what that difference is, um, what is the difference and why should they choose each one? For sure. So pro kit we've got here, that, which is the, the black spring. So basically this is what we would call our go-to uh, solution for what the majority of everyone's looking for in terms of a performance uh, lowering kit. Yep. It subtly lowers your car, anything up to around 30 millimeters. It's somebody who wants to um, just tighten the handling, yep. improve the locks, give you back that control of feel. Because unfortunately these days, manufacturers of vehicles now are very much compromised in the way they have to make a vehicle handle out the factory. Granted. And so what we do is try and give it back to, uh, that handling back to the more enthusiastic driver. So by fitting a pro kit, it's a simple, easy, relatively inexpensive solution that works with all the standard equipment on the car. Yeah. So you can fit and forget. You don't have to mess about with changing ride heights. You can use the stock dampers. You can keep it all the so stock. No, no need to change any other component. They can just Absolutely fit not, and forget. No, no. I mean, well, I'm sure we'll talk about it later on, but with the accreditation that we achieve uh, with our springs, which is a requirement out in majority of Europe these days, yeah. Um, it, it will have to work with all the, the stock equipment, so that's an absolute given. Okay, superb. So that's the um, the, the, the Pro Kit, roughly about 30 mil, give or take. Yeah, depending um, on the chassis, yeah. And absolutely fine to work with the original stuff that's mounted on the car as it is. So then the other one that you do is the, the Sportline Kit. Yep, so Sportline, so where possible, we also look at an, an alternative solution. So for those people who want to go a little bit lower, yep. Uh, they may want a bit more of an aggressive look, so that more European nose down kind of look. And again, within the requirements of the accreditation that we achieve, um, we'll go as far as you can, but without compromising the ride and handling. And again, you can still use stock equipment. It's just, we offer the two different ones because there are two different types of customers that 100%. would go for this kind of solution. Yeah. Uh, but then again, we'll also look at um, a catalog uh, uh, part for a vehicle. So if, say Golf GTI and the Mark V platform, we don't offer a pro kit because it doesn't, we feel when we were testing it doesn't offer anything above and beyond the GTI as a package out of the factory. So we've just taken it a little bit further. So we only offer Sportline kit on that chassis. So that's okay. that's just how it happens to be. Yeah. And it's the same with the latest uh, Golf R. We tend to recommend uh, the Sportline because it doesn't really improve what VW we've already done out of the factory. And the reason for that a lot of the time is because we work so closely with these guys, particularly people like VW, that we will be the original equipment supplier for these performance packages that you get from the factory anyway. Got you, got you, fair play. So is, w would, you, um, would you say that going lower is always, is, is always better? Do you, would you always want to go as low as possible? Not necessarily, no. I mean, for, a lot, for some solutions, you'll see a race car that's absolutely as low as it will go, but then yeah. you'll see for certain tracks or certain conditions where it's particularly rainy or whatever it may be, they'll lift the car up for that improved ride height. I mean, the other aspect of that is um, the travel of the damper. If you go too low, you're, the problem then is you're going into the bump stops, yep. and when you're going into the bump stops, the rate will suddenly ramp up, yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. what will lead to either understeer or kick oversteer. Okay. This is the last thing you want when you're mid-corner on a roundabout um, or wherever on a track, call yeah. it what you will. Um, so we'll, we design a kit that doesn't go incredibly low. What we'll do is we'll just do it so it's the, the maximum you can get while still retaining a good ride quality, yep. which, you know, one aspect of uh, the design of our springs, which we're famous for, is the progressive nature of them. Having, you talk about ride quality, I mean, I've used IBAC suspension on um, many different vehicles. I had a Golf GTD um, with them on, I've had a BMW Estate with them on, and I've always gone for, um, I've always gone for you guys mm -hmm. because it's got that really 
comfortable ride, but yeah. when you start to really lean on it, which I think is what you're going to get to now, when you start to really lean on it, then, yeah. then so, you get that sports feel. Exactly that. So within this design of the spring, what we try and tre to achieve, in particular with Sportline 1, as you see, it's got this clip tubing on because what this section will do is close more often uh, than not. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, is that you actually ride around on this softer section. So there's two rates here to this spring. There's a softer section, uh, combining with a stiffer section. So when, as James says, when you when you press on, this section will close. So when you're into lean in the corner, when you transfer that load across, say on a roundabout on a racetrack, when you're into a chicane or whatever it may be, this section closes, and then you're into the stiffer section of the spring, which is then what controls the car through the corner. But then out of that, when you're driving to and from the track or wherever it may be, everyday driving, you're riding around on that softer section. So you've not compromised your ride, mm -hmm. but you've still got that handle in there ready to go yeah. when you want to press on because it will then close that section as you press on and then you're working on that, that higher rate than the, the OE standard. So they're absolutely perfect for uh, a daily um, that you commute in and then when you want to go and have a little bit of fun at the weekends yeah, then exactly. it's got that performance there for yeah, you exactly and that, that doesn't matter whether you're talking about the, the sport line or the pro kit? No, nope, exactly the same. What, again, so some pro kits will be linear with this particular one is because we decided that the handling and ride wasn't compromised to an extent, I mean, you, you always shift the balance. From the factory, it's somewhere over here towards comfort. Yeah. With a pro kit, you're always gonna shift it more towards the handling side. So you will sacrifice a little bit of comfort, but we deemed it worthwhile for that kit to do that with that one. So you've always got that rate ready to go. So each kit is kind of tailored specifically Completely for that example, for that usage. Yep, exactly that. Fantastic. Now you mentioned linear mm -hmm. as, uh, as a type of spring. We've, sure. co we've covered progressive mm -hmm. linear. Now, there's a couple of other big springs there, mm -hmm. and um, one thing that we, that we tend to get asked is, uh, what's the difference between a normal spring, if you call it that, and a race spring? Sure. You know, can, can I go and use that race spring on my, on my BMW? So if you've got coilovers fitted and you've got the ability to fit what we call a closed parallel ground spring, then yeah, absolutely, you can play about with the rates of that to your heart's content, but you couldn't just go fitting this straight onto a, a standard damper. It just, it wouldn't work. Okay. There'll be issues surrounding things like uh, the free length will affect the ride height yeah. um, and things like having a two rate section will, will need to be included as well for things like running out of, of damper travel, that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, you can't just go fitting that straight on, but these are not just for race vehicles. They're all made from the same spring material. In fact, yeah. this, this, the ERS and the Pro Kit and Sportline range are all made from the same silicone chrome steel that we use for the Formula One springs that we make okay, and yeah. Formula E. and, and yeah. British touring car, you name it. You're everywhere really, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah, at the moment. Um, and with the, the new uh, EV vehicles coming along, yeah, yeah. Um, rates are shifting because vehicles are- so they're, they're, they're we Yeah, the, the weights are very different and the way they handle is very different again. It's so cool. we're finding that they're going from the usual setups that we've seen over the past years when they're going testing and developing in the winter months yeah. to completely new setups. So we're having to shift our stock and, and types of, of springs that we hold in terms of ERS for those race teams. Got you. Fair play, mate. Fair play. That's a um, good, good piece of advice. So if it's a race spring, you want to be sticking to uh, a race setup, essentially, uh, whether that's coilover or something for the track itself, sure. not to be used on the road, really. The other thing to consider is when, uh, when you're looking at modifying your car and putting a lowering spring onto it and changing the suspension, um, any component really though, um, would you need to be telling your insurance? You know, is, is that something that you need to cover off with them? Yeah, I mean, personally I would. I think it's a good idea that you uh, declare these things because certainly if you, you know, if an issue occurs and you've got a red spring on your car, you might have a problem. It's gonna stand out a little bit potentially, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But saying that when I've done it, because I have, obviously I've got a pro kit fitted to, to my cars, um, I've declared it and they've always said, oh, up to 40 mil, we're, we're not really fussed about it. anyway. Okay. So a lot of the time you, you're completely fine, even usually within the scope of a, a sport line, you might still be okay. Got and it. the premium's never that much anyway, relatively speaking. Just to round out then, with regards to the springs, mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of fit and forget, they've got a five year- Five year warranty, five -year warranty on all our springs, absolutely. Um, and uh, you don't have to use anything else, you can just use them on their own with the original stuff that's on there. Yep. Um, so the, uh, one of the other products that we've got out here in front of us at the moment is anti-roll bars. Some people will call it the fifth spring yep. um, because it's obviously it's got that capability of changing the ha handling characteristics. Mm -hmm. What is, um, first of all, what is an anti-roll bar uh, and what does it do for you? So uh, particularly on these days with a lot of vehicles being um, independent suspension, particularly on the front, mm -hmm. um, 
it always seems a bit daft to compromise that setup by linking the two together, but effectively, this is what this does. So when you're cornering hard, the lateral load and the mass of the car will want to shift over to the opposite side to the way you're steering. Yeah. And this is what controls that shifting of body weight. Okay. It's good to have some, because otherwise if you have it and it's so stiff, when you transition, you'll lose traction yeah. and the car will slide. What we do is we uprate both the front and rear, which is we always recommend going front and rear wherever yeah. possible. Yeah, a lot of the stuff you supply comes in the kit, of course. Com yeah, as, as a pair completely with everything yeah. that you need. Um, and then the, the idea of that is that you uprate the entire chassis. So yeah. you, you effectively sort, you retain the balance of the car as it came from the factory, but you're uprating the body control. Okay. Um, so that can be for anything. Again, like I said to you before, we do this kind of thing for ambulances because yeah, they, they've got a lot yeah. of mass on board. Yeah. But when you're pressing on, it's the same sort of deal, that, and particularly now with EVs, because yeah. they're so heavy and the mass, uh, even though it is positioned quite low, mm -hmm. that two ton plus of vehicle shifting one side to the other is makes a, a huge issue in terms of, of tire traction. Yeah. And the beauty of these is, particularly with a lot of our kits, is you see um, that this one, it's got dual mounting points, isn't it? So yeah, so you can attach your drop links in two different places, the outer hole being the softer one and the, the inner being the stiffer section. Some people on front wheel drive cars like to leave this on the softer section with mm -hmm. the stiffer bar relatively to the front. Okay. So what, that, what that'll make the car do is as you transition from one side to the other, the back will follow the front more. So you kind of kill uh, off that okay. understeer that you yeah, get from the factory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is what's deemed safe, particularly on a two wheel drive car these days, is that as you go along, if you lose traction, and the front will go, yeah. because all you need to do is come off the throttle and it will yeah, come yeah, back yeah. in line. But we tune it so that it will, you know, it, it will, it'll kill that understeer. It will still understeer, depending on what setting you have. Yeah. Uh, but when you lift off, it won't suddenly flick you out. And obviously we yeah, don't yeah. design a kit that will do that, but it will actually make the car come back into line faster ready for you to turn into the next corner, that's the idea. And of course, if you ended up wanting a different kind of characteristic on the road, yep. if you ended up turning up at a track and you've got one of the adjustable ones, mm -hmm. then you can just drop the back end, move, move the bars around, for sure. change, change the bolt hole, and away you go with a different, yeah. a different characteristic if you find something that isn't working for you. Or if the conditions change, if it goes from dry to wet, for example. Completely, we've had people, because uh, we do a lot of anti-roll bar kits for the R35 GTR. Yeah. And Hell that has a five positions. Yeah, and they just there are five positions um, on one five. end, five positions on one okay. end. Um, so you can really play about with it. I mean, it depends on how much traction power you're putting out. Yeah, yeah. And it's on the back end that the adjustability is, is, is the most variable. Okay. Because we'll, people, customers find that that is where you want it. Yeah. Because it is so much power through the back end of that, the way it pushes it through the system, that you can tune it to that track that day okay. and changing conditions, like you said. Yeah. And if you're putting that many different mounting points in there, that doesn't really matter, really, what power the car's producing, because you've catered for all that adjustability. Oh, completely and utterly, yeah. I mean, it's always uprated from stock anyway, but then you can play about with, you can change it so that the back end is incredibly soft compared to the front. I mean, if yeah. it's raining heavily and you're on a rear wheel drive car, yeah, then right. you would want to go softer on the back so that that is, the, the lazy back end will get that grip for yeah. you as you power out of the corner yeah. um, and effectively make the front understeer a little bit yeah, yeah, for yeah. you relative to the back. So it'll keep the car in line for you. And then when you go around a couple of times and then the conditions do change later, like you, you can then play about with it and move it around. Get into the pits, yeah. sort it and out. It's, it's and a five minute go. job each, each side. Um, spaces are another thing that you do it within your range. Um, yeah. They come in a host of different uh, colors and sizes and, and, and fitments. But um, one of the main reasons we get asked for a wheel space is to try and get that wheel fitment looking just on point, getting the wheels sat in the arch and making it look flush and getting that fitted look. Other than that, is there, is there other benefits to fitting a spacer and why, why would somebody choose an IBAC spacer sure. over some of the spacers that you can see in the market? So there are a number of reasons. You've covered the most popular one, which is for sure. People just want that kind of flush look yeah. um, as you look down the side of the car. There's also track width increase. Yep. So for certain conditions, again, on track, you can widen the track, either front and or rear, depending on how you want it to drive, to change the handling characteristics of the car. Yep. Effectively, by widening the track, you're making it, the suspension softer because the lever yeah, is now yeah, bigger yeah. at the spring. Yep. So you can play about with relatively front to rear, which one's stiffer, which one's softer, mm -hmm. and fine tune it like that as well. Mm -hmm. There's also things like big brake clearance. So say you fit a big brake, you want to keep your yeah, stock wheels yeah. or your rain wheel set up is such that it would clash with your brakes. Yeah. You could have a, a set of slip on spacers yeah. and you can have a stud set up and you can slide that spacer on, pop your, 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 your rain wheel on and off you go. Um, the other one we work on again with big brake kits is things like armored vehicles. So we supply um, 
wheel spaces as well for these UN vehicles where there's big bricks behind these wheels, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they keep the stock wheels to make it look like a standard yeah, vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have these humongous eight, 10, 12 hot brake systems behind these things to stop five ton of vehicle. Going and then you've got a wheel space yeah. there to retain the original wheel. Yeah, so th there's that kind of use case as well. Or there's that aftermarket wheel that you have to have. Got you. And the offset that you can get is that one that just won't work unless yeah. you go for a simple wheel spacer solution. Yeah. In terms of why I go for us, with everything that we have, with it, the with it be the steel springs, and we're also starting to make uh, titanium uh, springs again um, for the likes of Bugatti. Okay. Um, we've done that before. Um, nice name drop there. Thank you. Uh, for the Veyron, we made titanium springs. Okay. Um, we're on the Chiron now as well. Okay. Um, and we use the finest grade steel and alley that you can get. So the aluminium we use is the best in the marketplace. Mm. We want to know that that product going out into the marketplace is the best that we can put out there. Yeah. Because the reason we give a five year warranty on products like this is because we're very confident that they will last. Yeah, cracking piece of gear and they're available in different color options, different widths, as I said before, and across a host of applications. Um, that being said, we have a full catalog of IBAC on the website at the moment for you to go and have a look at. If you put your car into the vehicle search at the top, we'll show you everything that's available for you. Um, ben, thank you very much for Pleasure. coming in today and explaining the range to us. Um, we hope you uh, have a nice, safe journey back in that wonderful new JCW that you've got. Thank you. And guys, uh, we hope you like it. If you hit the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell, you'll see the next one that we're doing. Until next time, see you later.